Doyle from Optics EQ, and today's video race of the day, I'm going to take another approach. I'm not going to just focus on a race, but I'm going to show you how to use some techniques in selecting plots that could provide some value and some price horses, and then maybe drill down and look at what profile of the horse that you want to consider when you get such a plot, okay? So I just think it's better to do that than kind of drill into any particular race because people have been asking more, how do, how do you do things? How do you find these races and so forth? So hopefully uh, this will help. Again, there's no cookbook, right? You just don't, can't just go, you know, directions. I mean, we give you a framework and it's kind of up to you, but uh, the information is good. And there's, uh, there's certain techniques that can really uh, help you identify some good price horses. And I think this is one of them. So I'm going to look at scan. So I'm going to click this button here. And what this does, and I've already got it predefined in terms of the, what I want to look at it. But normally this would be, list would be really long. It has all the races for the day. And what I've done is I've filtered it for what I think are races that are high contention, high speed. So you can see the contention above that bar. You see greater than or equal to five. What does that mean? That means I'm looking for all the red or the flame contentions. I want it to be hot. I want the plot fit to not be red greater than three. Those are the numbers. You can see the numbers to the right of these things we're talking about. Um, in the next release, we're going to have a fast pace scenario. You just click it and it'll give you this. So you won't have to worry about it. But for now, greater than or equal to 40. Uh, no Q change. What does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, standard surface distance are relatively uh, equivalent, not big changes there. And then we don't want a lot of horses that are unable to be plotted you know, lessens the reliability of the plot. So we've got our list, but, you know, we just don't go through all these races. What I do is I just go through them quickly and see which ones fit. And again, it's a feel. Uh, as you get to use this thing more and more, you'll get a feel for what races work for you, and you'll develop your own types of things. But at least I'm giving you some kind of a framework to how to go approach this. So um, the first one is race seven at Aqueduct. Uh, what I don't like about this right off the bat is the size of the field. Six horses. Now, if I'm forced to, you know, bet this race as part of a pick six, pick four, whatever, I'll, I'll delve in. But for this purposes, looking for prices and so forth, probably not going to be there. You got three squares. They're on all quadrants. Don't see value in this race, so I skip. I'm going to go into the Laurel race. And the Laurel race, the other thing about the Laurel race is it's a turf sprint. That was a little bit different animal, much more uh, quadrant ones, even with high contention, do pretty well. Uh, and you see the number eight there who's in bordering quadrant one and two, big square, sitting right there is the favorite. So nothing there that excites me just right off the bat, right? You got a favorite that looks pretty good. And again, turf sprint's a little bit different animal. Uh, the races I do, and there's two of them I want to look at. The first is Gulfstream Park race nine. It's a turf route. It's an optional claimer, a good race. A lot of contention. You can see visually, you see that contention in quadrant one with the circles and some squares, but it's just, there's a lot there. You got two horses that need the lead. They're two and eight. And then you got a bunch of EPs. And you can see the balance is more to EEPs than to PCs and Cs, right? You just count the numbers up. One, two, three, five, seven, eight. Eight versus five. So more balance on the EEP. That means more likely a horse is going to come from off the pace. And with that high contention and speed rating, that seems likely. Now, again, always check. Uh, scratches because this will change the way the plot looks and some of that i'm going to do a review on um, monday or tuesday about last week and show you some of those things you have to pay attention to when the when there are scratches because it does change the plot so i'm going to try to focus at least start my handicapping with seven nine eleven twelve and five the, the horses to the right on, on that R rpm v bar and you can see that um if i just scroll down here quickly you got a lot of horses coming off extended layoffs so the nine is iffy for me. Just look at that surface and distance plot as I hover over them. It's outlined number nine. Coming off a 631-day layoff, I, I, you know, I'm going to pass, especially at 7 to 2 in the morning line. Um, the other one is the seven coming off a year, nearly a year layoff. Don't know how he's going to come back. So seven and nine are probably going to uh, are going to downgrade. Uh, I look at the uh, 12. And 12 is coming off another layoff, changing barns, Some, someone I would consider. But I'm going to focus, when I get to the grid here, I'm going to focus on the 5 and the 11 because I think they're the best of the closers. And if we're looking for a closer, I want to look like for a horse that's kind of in form and 
and uh, could fire, right? So I'm going to go over to the grid. I'm going to look at the number five. First, before I'm going to look at the five, I always like to get a feel for what it's going to take to win this race. So you look at the optics fit range, 88 to 94, but we saw a lot of horses coming off layoffs. So I want to look at the um, last 45 days. So days since last race. Uh, I mean, let's, uh, let me get this. That's 45 days. Okay. So not much, right? So a speed figure of 88 and 89 is the top. So it's not going to take uh, a lot. I mean, probably take, like I said, the range is probably good. It'll probably take 88 to 94. So just keep that in mind as I, as I go through this. So number five, his last race was an 81, but he was wide, no cover, and he was running against better horses at Belmont. Okay. Then he's been kind of laid off. And always worry about layoffs. But in this case, this horse was entered twice. Once it was scratched because of the turf. Another reason, don't know. But that layoff wouldn't be there if it wasn't for, um, you know, the scratch and, you know, the, the weather and off the turf kind of thing. So I feel a little bit better about that. And you can see this horse has run in that 90 range where it's going to take to win and previously, one in a grade three. So this horse has got the class to compete. He's a closer. Um, he's run well, pretty well over this track, uh, way back in 2019. So, uh, yeah, let's just look at his Gulfstream races because I think he's run fairly well. Yeah, he's run fairly well. He's had one bad race, but that was in a stakes race. But, I mean, this horse has got back class. He was competing in grade threes. So a horse with class, he gets a hot, uh, field that's kind of soft coming off of a lot of layoffs. He gets pace in front of him. This horse is a contender at what's going to be probably a very big price. Um, yeah, we're 15 to 1. So Hawkish is one of the horses, I think, that I would look at uh, in exactors, exotics, or even when uh, in a race like this. And then the 11 was the other one, a little bit more um, sneaky, I think. I think this horse, you could see that um, he's kind of been sprinting more recently. You kind of take the sprints out and get back to his routes. You can see he, he's always run well enough to win a race like this. And let's look at his GP form too, routing. Yeah, very good. Um, so this is a horse, again, another contender in this race. Uh, so for me, let's look, just look at the 11. Uh, I mean, the 12, 12 was the other one. Yeah, you know, if you if you, if you want to kind of use the 12, I just know, again, the layoff, he didn't run well last time off a big layoff like this. Now, the other thing about this one is changing barns. So, this horse may need a race. T typically, uh, Wilkes horses do. So for me, it's five and eleven horses that can come off the pace and be part of the exotics at some really big prices. So that's the Gulfstream race. Going to switch over to the Hawthorne race. That was another one we saw that looked like it had some contention to blow up. And um, when you look at this one, again, it's pretty much you got EEPs, and, and you and you can see when you just look at the table here. Um, you got the six coming off. It looks like the one, two, and nine are the closers in this race. You, know, you got the high speed contention and so forth. Now you got a couple of squares here. Yeah, but the one thing I'll notice about the number three is he's been sprinting. So keep that in mind, right? So he doesn't really, if you see how he doesn't plot on surface distance. So you got like speed horses and then a sprinter, you know, sprinkled in. So he should get some good pace up front. The one and the nine look like the closers to me. OK, uh, the two don't like the surface and distance place. Yeah, it's circle and quadrant two. Not happy about that. So I'm going to drill down a little bit here on the one and the. Nine of the two horses that looked OK, and they're big prices, too. They're 15 to one and 10 to one, respectively. Um, this horse ran a pretty good race at. Um, Arlington to break his maiden came off the pace. Uh, then he ran a good race first time, non winners two lifetime over this track, it's the same distance. And then they bumped him way up. And now they're dropping him down a little bit. He didn't run as well, but he ran, you know, so finished uh, fifth, round of 69. Um, if you look at that race, and this is important, like I'm going to double click here, and I'm going to pull that race up, that last race that he was in. And notice his plot, number one, Easton Rocks. See, I'm highlighting him here. And you can see in, he's a circle in quadrant four. Okay, that's not good. So it just shows you the field he was facing is much different than today because today he's a nice 
big square there in quadrant four, and he's pretty high up. So it's a completely different scenario. This is where pace dynamics really play in, right? So he just looks different today than he has looked in the past in terms of his plot. So uh, I'm going to upgrade him, and he's a big price. And if you look again, if I'm going to look at his speed figures, he's around a 73 two back at a lower level. That was off a layoff. So if you figure some improvement too now with the drop and the better pace dynamics, you know, he could be running in the, you know, high 70s, you know, low 80s, which is, you know, good enough to win a race like this. You can see the range. So he's a little bit sneaky play. And then the other closer I thought had a look was the number nine, Rip it Ryan. Um, gets back to routing. He's more, you know, he's, he's kind of done the sprinting thing. Let's look at his route races. He's got some route racers here <clears throat> that uh, are okay. I mean, figure-wise, you know, the 78. Again, those are against better. So he's a horse that I think with the, uh, the switch from the sprint back to the route, it's going to help him. Um, you know, he had a, uh, just, just to go, he had a bad race here, but it was in the slop, gets better. You know, so I think he gets the class relief and gets the right distance now and surface that he wants. Dirt and routing. So we'll see. But um, again, in a wide open race, these are two you can play with around in your exotics. The one and the nine, Hawthorne race eight. So that's it. Um, again, hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, if you want to check us out, go to opticseq.com. Learn more about us, but uh, got to use some imagination. But hopefully, we gave you some techniques to pick races where you know there's this you, you got an edge in terms of pace analysis on the rest of the players out there, and you can collect some big tickets if you kind of look at this race. So that's it from me, John Doyle, Optics EQ. Thanks for listening and subscribe on our web channel, YouTube channel on this one, and also. Uh, Check us out again on OpticsEQ.com. Thanks for listening.